Okay, so here is the advanced form of elimination. So in previous problems, we worked on problems that looked like, for example, number three. Number three, you would look at it and go, okay, I need to do elimination because I can see that here my y's will cancel out. Okay. And that tells you usually that there's going to be elimination. But the other thing that tells you that it should be elimination is the fact that neither of these equations are solved for a particular variable. Like in substitution, you would have x equals something or y equals something. Here, neither equation has a variable by itself. So that also tells you that this is elimination. So in previous problems, you would see that negative y plus y would actually cancel out. So these cancel out and then you would just add straight down 1x plus 2x is 3x 11 plus 19 is 30 you would then divide both sides by 3 and x equals 10 and finally you would then substitute it back into one of your equations uh, so I'm going to substitute it into the first one. So I'm going to put this x all the way right here. So what it looks like is 10 minus y equals 11. I then would subtract the 10 to the other side, giving me negative y equals 1. There is a negative 1 that's right here that I need to divide over, giving me y equals negative 1. My final answer would then be a coordinate point of 10, comma, negative 1. And that's how elimination was last time we spoke. It, everything was all set up. Okay, if we look at the next problem over to the right, you'd see the exact same thing. Automatically, you would notice this, 6x, negative 6x plus 6x would cancel out. And you would add straight down, this would be 9y equals negative 9. And then you would go ahead and solve. But the problem with this is it only works when everything's perfectly set up, where things automatically cancel out right away. Not all the time are you going to have problems like that. Let's look at number seven. Sometimes when you look at the problems, and you'll see here that <clears throat> at first it may look like these cancel out. But if you look closer, you'll notice that negative 6x and negative 6x do not go to 0. Negative 6x and negative 6x is negative 12x. So the x's don't actually cancel out. Well, let's try the y's. Well, nope, it's not the y's because they're completely different numbers. So here you might look, you might think to yourself, I don't know how to solve this. I can't use substitution because one of my variables is not by itself. I can't use elimination because these don't get eliminated. It turns out that even though the problem looks like this, and it may look like you can't eliminate, you can do what is called forced elimination. Forced elimination is when you make something the number that you need it to be. So for example, this is negative 6x. So if I wanted it to drop out or be eliminated with this six, negative 6x, this would have to be a positive 6x. Negative 6x plus 6x would cancel out. So is there some way I can make this be a positive x? No, you can't just erase the minus sign. No. Is there something maybe I can multiply by to make this a positive 6x? And it turns out there is. If I just simply multiply this by negative 1, it would then become a positive 6x, which is what I need it to be. But the math rules say that you can't just multiply one thing by negative 1. You'd have to multiply everything by negative 1. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. This here, negative 1 times 3y becomes negative 3y. And negative 1 times negative 12 becomes positive 12. So I've completely changed the equation right here, I've completely changed it so I don't need it anymore. You can cross it out. And now I have a new equation. 
a new equation that will drop out or will get eliminated. Now the 6, negative 6x six and positive 6x six actually cancel out. And then I go about doing the normal things that I did with elimination. 6y plus negative 3y is 3y. 6 plus 12 is 18. Divide by 3, divide by 3, y equals 6. And exactly what I did in the previous problems, okay, I'll then plug that back in and solve for y. Now I can plug this into either equation. I can even plug it into my new equation if I wanted to. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and plug it in the top equation. Since it's y equals, I'm going to take this over here and I'm going to plug it in for y. So what this looks like is negative 6x plus 6. But instead of y, it's 6 equals 6. I know, a lot of 6s. Negative 6x, 6 times 6 is 36 equals 6. So when I subtract the 36, I get negative 6x equals negative 30. Divide both sides by negative 6, and you get x equals positive 5. So my final solution, x comma y, 5 comma 6. And that is using forced elimination, where you're going to have to multiply by something to make the things eliminate. Let's see that one more time. Let's go over to number 8. Actually, you know what? We're going to make it a little bit more difficult. Let's go down to number 9, or number 11, sorry. In number 11, again, um, you might look at the problem here and go, okay, well, those don't drop out. Mm, those don't drop out. So I can't use drop out. Well, I can't use um, substitution either because the, one of my equations is not solved for a variable. There's no variable by itself. So I can't, I don't know how to do this problem. But remember your, your tools kind of in your tool bag. I can multiply equations by things to make them drop out. So if you look at the x's right here, a Maybe I could multiply by something to make it drop out. Maybe I could do that to the y's. But is there a number that I can multiply 5 by that it would get 7? No. Is there a number I can multiply 7 by to get 5? No. So I probably can't do the y's. But the x is, I could multiply this 3 and get 9. So maybe I can do a forced drop out here. Well, if this is negative 9x, what would this need to be? positive 9x. If this is negative 9x, this needs to be positive 9x. So how can I multiply, or what can I multiply by, to get this to be positive 9? If you said multiply by negative 3, that's correct, because negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, and that's what I want. But remember, I can't multiply one thing. I have to multiply everything by that negative 3. So I'm going to write my new equation down below. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9x. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21y. And negative 3 times negative 16 is positive, uh, let's see, positive 48. And now I've manipulated this equation here, so I no longer need this. The reason I cross it out is to not get confused when adding up my equations on which one I'm supposed to be adding. So cross it out. And now the x's cancel out. Add straight down, just like always, 5 plus negative 21 is negative 16y. 16 plus 48 is 64. Divide by negative 16. y equals negative 4. And just like always, to find the other variable, we're going to need to plug that back in. Now, it doesn't matter what equation you use. You can even use your new one if you want to. But I'm going to use the first one here and use it right there. So what this looks like is negative 9x 
plus 5 instead of y, it's now negative 4, equals 16. Negative 9x, 5 times negative 4 is negative 20, equals 16. We then add 20 to the other side. So negative 9x equals 36. And then you divide by negative 9. Divide by negative 9, x equals negative 4. So both of them are the same. So my answer, my coordinate, is negative 4, negative 4. And that is forced elimination. Now, I'm going to have you try one on your own. So we're going to pause the video and have you try one on your own, and then I will post uh, the answer here so that you can see the answers and check your answers. So go ahead and pause the video now, do number 12, see how you do, and then play the video to see how I got the answer. Okay, so here is how I got the answer. Okay, I noticed that right away here that things don't automatically drop out. Okay. I look at the x's first, and there's nothing I can multiply by to get 7, and there's nothing I can multiply by to get 2. So i got to move on to the y's. Now there is a 1 here, so could I multiply something to get 3? Yeah, I could multiply something and get 3. The problem is, though, if this is 3y, what would this need to be? If this is positive 3y, this is going to have to be negative 3y. So what would I multiply by? Negative 3. So I'm going to multiply by negative 3. And I have to multiply everything else by negative 3 to make it legal. Negative 3 times negative 7 is positive 21x. Negative 3 times y is negative 3y. That was the whole point, right? That was the whole point of doing that, so this would cancel out. And negative 3 times negative 19 is positive 57. Okay. And now I no longer need this equation. I'm going to go ahead and solve. My y's will cancel out. Negative 2x plus 21x is 19x. Negative 19 and 57 is positive 38. When you divide by 19, you get x equals 2. I'm then going to plug it back into the equation. And I'm going to plug it into the first one. Remember, you can do either one. doesn't matter. Negative 2, x is 2, plus 3y equals negative 19. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 3y equals negative 19. I'm going to add the 4 to the other side. 3y equals negative 19 plus 4 is negative 15. Divide by 3, y equals negative 5. So my final solution is 2, negative 5. Okay. If you have questions when you're doing your work today, uh, just go ahead and send me a message on Canvas or email me. I'd be more than happy to explain it more. Uh, if you need more help. So your assignment is not only to watch these notes, but to do the worksheet that goes with it. So check out Canvas and check out the worksheet that goes with this, and that is your assignment. Thank you.